The way to reduce unemployment is not by focusing on current job seekers. NGO STEM in Action says the focus should be on grade nines and even younger. It says pupils must be guided on the right subjects needed to secure jobs. The organization is pushing for the STEM subjects of science, technology, engineering, and maths. Let's discuss this now with STEM in Action's Isabel van Kent. Isabel, good afternoon and welcome to today. And thank you very much for your time this afternoon here on today. We always hear about the importance of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and that we need to be upping our game in this regard in our schools. But we don't seem to be getting there. Where is the challenge? What is the biggest challenge? Um, good afternoon, Dan, and, and thanks for the chat. Um, I think the biggest challenge um, is that there are so many learners that's not exposed to these careers from a young age. Um, besides the fact that um, performance and achievement uh, in mathematics and science um, is not adequate for most learners to follow these careers, so it's actually a multi-pronged problem that needs multiple interventions. The other day I was sitting with a young man who's got a BSc honours but now finds himself working in a telecoms industry doing data analysis because he can't get a job as a scientist. How do we then encourage young people to take the right courses in STEM so that when they finish they are employable? Um, I think, Dan, if you look critically at the, um, at the critical skills list in South Africa, there are some STEM careers, uh, specifically in science, that's much sought after, whilst others um, are actually um, could be over, um, there could be a, a more people than there are jobs for. So it's very important that, um, that you choose your career very wisely. I, I hear what you're saying. We, we want to promote the STEM careers and say it's part of the scarce skills um, collection, but, but yet there are cases like that as well. Yeah, I guess it's to identify what careers in STEM will be in demand in this fast-changing world of ours that's becoming highly digitalized and highly technological advanced. Yes, definitely so. Um, uh, just to, to, um, to state one such fact, um, you're talking about digitizing and highly advanced. There is a huge shortage of um, people able to work in the whole information technology um, sector, or let's call it the computer sector, in terms of data analysis, um, programming, or other words, coding. Some people call it programming, some call it coding. There's just a huge demand for these individuals. And they actually draw from other um, uh, occupations such as engineers to fill those positions. So it is very important to familiarize yourself um, of exactly what STEM careers are in demand at the moment. Yeah, where can pupils get the best guidance? Now, that's a million-dollar question that you're asking me on the spot. Um, I think reading a lot, um, looking at um, uh, job um, advertising um, sites, um, and just familiarize yourself with what are the advertisements out there, what are the, the, um, the careers that's high in demand, and then also to speak to, um, to these um, personnel agencies to find out, you know, what, what is it that, um, that's look, that they are looking for mm. um, over a certain period. You, you will have to inform yourself before you make that final decision. Mm. Yeah, recruitment agencies might help to give you a sense of what people are looking for. But you, as a university, can also partner or invite companies to come and share what are these skills that they require in STEM in, in the current market. Because things are changing very fast, Isabel. A job that might be great today and cool, whether it's a digital or whatever, in five years' time might be gone and replaced by another job. I think in the area, yes, definitely. Let, let me first um, comment on the on your first um, statement, and that is that we, as a as an intervention program, definitely do that. We invite professionals from certain companies to come and speak to the cohort of learners that we have contact with, um, and especially in in the digital um, areas, things change very fast. But I think because they are so. There's such a big demand and there are actually relatively few people who can satisfy those job demands. Um, people actually keep themselves, um, you know, uh, on par with what is required 
um, at that time. Um, it's like a critical thinking. If you have a basic background in programming or in data analysis, you can actually educate mm -hmm. yourself further to adjust. Yeah. In my intro, I said the STEM in action says the focus should be in, in grade nines and, and even younger. If, I, if I'm correct, would younger mean grade one, for example? Should we start at that very early stage of early childhood development to instill the, the understanding, the love and passion for STEM? Um, um, uh, uh, people who know me well will, will know I always joke and say the intervention should start straight after birth. So rather than let's take it to, to the early childhood development to the grade R level, um, it doesn't, we don't have to make them so aware of STEM, but as long as we develop their ability to think critically, to problem solve on their level, then the, um, the love for mathematics and science will automatically follow. Uh, because we find that a, a lot of learners at high school level can't think critically because they don't have a frame of reference. They've never been challenged to solve problems. So, so one doesn't have to um, indoctrinate them with STEM careers and STEM science subjects at that age, but rather develop them optimally so that they would be able at a later stage to interact with the numbers and the formulas and Einstein and his friends' um, ideas. Yeah, and then we should be changing our curriculum maybe from that, Ellie said. Maybe we should be changing the content of our education system because uh, uh, there's still a lot of uh, putting stuff into memory, you know, to memorize and then exam time you regurgitate on paper. No, definitely so, but but I also think it's um, it's part of the systemic problems that um, because of a lot of reasons, there's a shortage of teachers. Um, there are too few. The, the ratio of learners to teachers is too little. So so there's lots of reasons that understanding of basic concepts aren't taught properly at an early stage. So, so that just gets exhausted. Uh, that's just actually a domino effect as the learner gets older. So, so yes, there are systemic problems that would definitely need some attention. And um, yes, one can talk for two, three hours about that. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I, are you seeing uh, in effect that if, if, if people really are guided properly uh, in terms of the right subjects and uh, uh, especially in the STEM family of subjects that they have a better chance in our economy currently to, to be employed, to, to get a job? Um, statistically, that must be the case, Dan. But, but also, before we go any further, it is very important that this, the STEM fields must fall within a learner's whole interest profile and that they must have that aptitude. Otherwise, you're going to have be an, uh, un, um, a, a very unhappy employee for the next X, um, number of years that you're going to be working. Um, but um, so, so one must um, bear that in mind as well. When, when do you test for that aptitude? One can test for that aptitude as early as grade seven. Even earlier, I am not an expert on that, but I know of learners who's um, been tested um, at grade seven level. Um, and also just coming back to the statistical possibility, um, if more learners are stimulated at an early age to be curious about how things work and how problems are solved, then I think that would um, sort of be an, an automatic um, result that, that STEM careers are much more accessible for them and that they're much more um, interested and inspired to follow that should they have the aptitude and the, the, um, the interest in that. Okay, talking to us virtually from Gebecha in the Eastern Cape this afternoon. Thank you, Isabel van Krent, STEM in Action Program Manager at the Nelson Mandela University. Still